Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary, Director, I appreciate y'all being here today. I have several pressing questions for both of you, and in my limited amount of time, it'll allow for only one or two, and I, I trust that you'll send a prompt response to my written questions. And my first question is for both of you, but I would like uh, maybe the director to give me a written response to, but I'd like to address this particularly here in this hearing to Secretary, most terrorist experts believe that given the list of, of um, incidents of homegrown radicals, lone wolves and trained terrorist recruits, the U.S. is now little different from Europe in terms of having a domestic terrorist problem involving immigrant as well as indigenous Muslims as well as converts to Muslim uh, to Islam. However, in April 2010, the Obama administration announced that it intended to remove religious terms such as quote Islamic extremism from the national security strategy. Moreover, in a May 2010 speech at the Center for Strategic and Inter International Studies, the Deputy National Security Advisor for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, John Brennan, stated that the administration would not, quote, describe our enemy as jihadist or Islamist. Do you believe that by disregarding the ideological factor behind the recent rise in domestic and international terrorism, namely by Islamic extremism, the administration is inhibiting our ability to address and combat this dangerous trend? Representative, um, uh, without uh, having seen John Brennan's uh, speech uh, or having recently reviewed the, the national security strategy, um, let me, uh, uh, if I might, respond to that in writing uh, my, uh, I, I would venture to say uh, that what the uh, concern was is that uh, in addition to Islamist uh, terrorism or Islamist inspired terrorism, we not overlook other types of extremism uh, that can be homegrown and that we indeed have experiences with, as I described to uh, Representative Thompson. Um, but as our testimony uh, here today uh, indicates, uh, we understand uh, full well that uh, Islamist inspired, Al Qaeda inspired, well, however you want to call it, terrorism, be it coming from abroad or now being homegrown, is part and parcel of the security picture that we now have to deal with in the United States. Well, I appreciate that written response. I went through a um, security at TSA not long ago, and I went through, there was a guy who followed me, very obviously was um, of, of Arabian or Middle Eastern descent. Both of us were not patted down. There was a grandma who followed me, and she was patted down. There was a small child with her. He was patted down. I have yet to see a grandma try to bomb any U.S. facility with uh, chemicals in her bloomers. So I think we need to focus on those who want to do us harm. Re Representative, if I might respond to that, because that is a, a common complaint that I well, I saw it myself. Well, I know. And, and let me just uh, suggest, uh, first of all, uh, that um, uh, when we add random screening uh, to whatever uh, we are doing, it has to be truly random. Uh, otherwise, you use the value of unpredictability. And secondly, I'd be happy to have you briefed in a classified setting about how when we set firm rules about we won't screen this uh, kind of person or that kind of person, uh, that our adversaries, they know those rules and they uh, attempt to train and get around them. Well, thank you, and I'd appreciate that briefing. Um, we've got to focus on those people who are going to do us harm. And this administration and your uh, your, your department has seemed to be very adverse to focusing on those entities that want to do us harm and have even um, at times back when, when um, your spokesman came and testified before this committee would not even describe that Fort Hood um, massacre as a terrorist threat and talked about an alleged attack. I think this is unconscionable. We've got to focus on those people who want to harm us. And the people who want to harm us are not grandmas, and it's not little children. It's the Islamic extremists. There are others, and I want to 
look into those too. But your own department has described people who are pro-life, who are pro-gun, who believe in the Constitution, and, and military personnel as being potential terrorists. Now, come on, give me a break. Um, we do need to focus on the folks that want to harm us. And, um, and I encourage you to, to maybe take a step back and look and see how we can focus on those people who want to harm us. And we've got to profile these folks. Y'all have not been willing to do so, in my opinion. And I hope that you will, will uh, look at this issue because I think it's absolutely critical for the safety of our nation and for the American citizens. I'll submit the other uh, questions for written comment. And thank you both for being here. Mr. Chairman, may, may I make a, a yes. response to that? Uh, first of all, uh, Representative, the, the hundreds of thousands of men and women in my department, they come to work every day to protect the American people. Uh, they uh, writing or the document I think you're referencing was something that was actually drafted at the end of the Bush administration and issued by mistake at the beginning of this administration. Um, and I would point out uh, that we just established that uh, in uh, the Hassan matter, uh, he is a terrorist and he was an active duty military individual.